right, so thanks everyone so much for joining us today. This is our third monthly Hedera Engineering Insights webinar. Uh, my name is Brady Gentile. I'm on the product marketing team at Hedera. And today we're gonna to be joined by Donald Thibault, who's Director of Product Management. And we have a special guest today, uh, Simi Hunjin, who is joining us uh, as a developer advocate at Hedera. And Donald is gonna be sharing some of the new features and functionality that's found in Hedera Services Code uh, 0.8.0, as well as an update to Throttles and uh, the Hedera API, Happy, on the testnet and mainnet. And then uh, Simi is gonna be running through a demo and an explanation of uh, the state proofs alpha functionality that just released last week. You may have seen a blog posting about that on the Hedera blog. It's a very exciting functionality that just came out. Uh, as always, there's going to be a, a live Q&A at the end, so please drop your questions into the Q&A box uh, in the Zoom platform. You'll find that at the bottom there uh, next to the chat. And uh, we'll try to answer everyone's questions to the best of our abilities. And with that, I'm going to pass things over to Donald to kick things off. Excellent. Thank you, Brady. Um, good morning, good afternoon, everybody, wherever you're dialed in from. Uh, excited to talk with you again for our, our monthly uh, insights into our engineering practices and release webinar. Um, so we are in the middle of our period of testing on the public testnet for the version 0 0.8.0 release. Uh, which would then be updated to mainnet this coming uh, October 1st, this, this next Thursday, Thursday of next week. Um, so we'll go through, uh, as Brady mentioned, some of the changes at both the Hedera services as well as the mirror node layer um, for that release, as well as uh, show you one of the features that was released, uh, the state proof alpha, which is quite exciting. Um, you'll see this is a bit more of a limited release from a Hedera services perspective. It was primarily focused on um, finalizing and buttoning up the code in preparation for open review, um, as well as fixing a few bugs surfaced by the community, uh, which you should uh, see here shortly. Um, we've also been working at a strategic level to uh, move the SDKs towards version 2. Um, so that's something we, as well as some of the community members who are maintaining their own SDKs, uh, are working to do uh, and to ensure that they're updated and uh, completed from a feature parity as well as a documentation perspective. Our team's also been focused on, as I'll talk about at the end, um, some new services to work on for the Hedera mainnet. Um, so we're very excited to uh, take a look down the roadmap and, and see what might be coming down the pipe. Uh, but with that, let me jump in uh, to the 0.0, .0 release for the Hedera mainnet. So again, if you weren't already aware, we've moved to an open source model for the Hedera services code, which means that not only the code itself, the issues, as well as the release tags and notes are all publicly visible. Um, so we'll continue on this call to refer back to the release notes associated with each release. And you can see going back how we've tagged you know, the latest that's on mainnet, as well as the code before it gets updated to public testnet. So as I mentioned earlier, version 0.8.0 for the Hedera services is relatively smaller, um, given we're focused on tightening up some features for future releases. In this, you'll see that there's a few small changes, um, specifically marking a new protobuf field as deprecated. Um, and that's relating to the generation of threshold records. Now, it's important to keep an eye on that happy protobuf as it gets updated, as we'll move um, from having marked different components of that as needed as deprecated to actually removing them from the protobuf and the code. Um, you'll see a notice coming out about those changes in 090 in a couple of days, um, but I wanna make sure to surface it here so everybody's aware of where they can find this information and what to expect. In general, our approach will be to mark something as deprecated, but wait uh, a few months to actually deprecate it um, to ensure that each organization is able to um, review and adjust to their code. Um, so with that, I'll jump over to the mirror node code. Um, so really the most exciting feature in this release is something called our state proof alpha, which I'll pass it to Simi uh, to talk through and show a demo about in detail. It's important to note that the state proof alpha is something that can be consumed via the Hedera mirror node. 
and it allows somebody to get a greater trust similar to what state proofs in their full version will provide from the mainnet uh, directly from a mirror node. But I'll let Simi talk quite a bit about that. It is worth mentioning there's uh, an, a, a change to how we um, display the start date property. Um, so if you're a mirror node operator um, or updating to this latest release, you shouldn't see a disruption. But if you're starting your own mirror node from scratch, um, make sure to check in on that breaking change before you deploy. Um, you, of course, can see all of the different issues that the teams worked on, both enhancements to do things like improved performance testing, as well as some of the bug fixes that were updated in this latest release. Again, if you're interested in operating your own mirror node, um, feel free to reach out to our team. We always love to know what community projects are going on and who's uh, providing that as a service uh, to the market. Now, lastly, Brady mentioned an update to the throttles on the Hedera public testnet and mainnet. Um, so we're moving uh, to update those in, in pretty short order uh, so that they are consistent on both the public testnet and the Hedera mainnet. Um, so you can see that issue in the release um, that outlines what we intend to update the throttles to, uh, but we'll communicate the final version of those throttles uh, in advance of the update to the networks. So with that, I'm going to stop share and pass it over to Simi, uh, who's going to talk through this state proof alpha. Thanks. Thanks, Donald. Hi, everyone. Uh, thanks for joining. My name is Simi. I'm a developer advocate with Hedera, and I'm just going to cover a demo on state proof alphas and just kind of talk through um, what you can do with that. So let me go ahead and share my screen. So if you head over to our documentation site, um, you'll see how you can use this REST API. Um, all you really need is the transaction ID that you have interest in validating that it occurred on the Hedera network. And uh, what you get in response is um, record file contents, signature file contents, and address book file contents. And so um, I'll talk through that um, as I continue to go through the demo. But here's where you can find um, how to use this API. Um, so the first thing that I did was I just grabbed a transaction ID and I ran a request and here is the result of that request. So this is in base 64 encoding, so it's not really readable um, in this format right now, but what you can see is you get the record file contents. Um, this is the record file that the uh, transaction will be found in. You get your signature file content, so you have the node IDs of those um, nodes that sign the transaction or sign the record file, and um, their associated hash and signatures, as well as the addre address book file. And this contains um, the node IDs and public keys of all of the nodes um, in the network. So once you have this response, what you'll do is save it as a JSON file to your uh, computer locally, and Next, what we will do is use the state proof uh, checker to validate that this transaction actually occurred on the network. So uh, let me just move over. Oh, actually, I'm not sure if you guys saw the response. Let me do this. Is everyone able to see this? You guys were? Yeah, that's that's better. That's showing up now. I think it may have just uh, shared your browser at first. Oh, it did. Okay, sorry about that. So um, just to go through this again, um, this is the JSON uh, response that you receive. Um, it, you receive the record file contents, which is um, the transactions that occurred in this uh, record file, the signature file contents, which is the hash of the record file along with the signatures from the nodes on that record file. And then you also receive the address book, which contains a node and public keys um, of the nodes on the network. So once you get this response, you'll save it as a JSON file. And then let me um, switch over to the other screen. And what we'll do next is use a state proof checker to uh, validate that this tra transaction actually occurred on the network. Give me just a minute. Um, one second. 
there we go. Um, the way that you would go to use a state proof checker is uh, you'd head over to the Hedera Mirror node repository. You would uh, go into Hedera Mirror node, Hedera Mirror REST, and then into check state proof. Uh, the README actually gives you a very clear understanding of um, how this checker validates uh, the state proof along with um, how to install um, this, the check state proof tool. And so what we'll do is um, I already went ahead and installed it. Let me switch my screen over to the command line. And so um, I am already in um, check state proof. What we'll go ahead and do is run this command. And what it does is it takes the transaction ID and the file path to that JSON um, file that we saved from the REST API response. And we'll go ahead and run it. And so what it does is it parses the address book. So it um, grabs the node account IDs as well as the public key files. And it compares them to the address book that you can find on the network itself. It parses the um, record file to find that transaction that you have um, entered in the command above. And um, with the signature files, what it does is it takes the uh, hash on the record file and compares it to the hash of the uh, uh, hash found with the signatures to match that those two are the same, so that those nodes actually signed that record file. And so at the end, um, of the state proof checker, it lets you know um, whether the state proof was cryptographically valid or not. And in an opposite case, um, if we did, for example, change the transaction ID, so this transaction won't be found um, in this um, response, the um, checker will let you know that this state proof is cryptographically invalid. So that's how the um, state proof alphas, that's how you can use the state proof alphas today. Thanks, Simi. Um, so just a reminder, everybody to, you know, please start submitting questions as you have them uh, as we wrap up our content. In addition to what Simi shared on the state proof, it's important to note that that can start to open up some of the use cases for uh, the full version of state proofs, essentially how you can take that that proof, you know, share it with a third party. They can validate its integrity uh, from a cryptographic perspective and take actions based on the information provided in that state proof. Um, for us, we think this could present interesting use cases relating to interoperability um, between different networks, as well as between uh, different Hedera consensus service permission networks. Um, but certainly the number of use cases can expand far beyond that. So lastly, uh, I'll mention one of the features you'll have seen beginning to be added to the Hedera services repo uh, relates to the service I mentioned earlier, supporting native tokenization. Um, so I'm sure many of you have seen some of the code begin to be merged as well as the updates that are pending on the happy documentation that provide an overview of how this service can be used and leveraged uh, by developers. Our goal is that we'll continue uh, to do that development in the open source. I know a lot of you have been opening issues, questions, and bugs, which is incredibly helpful in that development process. Um, and then seek to enable preview access to that service on our preview net. Um, you'll see the code. Again, that code will be in master, but it won't yet be publicly accessible um, for some period of time. So I think with that, you know, we'll pause for uh, some questions um, and if not that, if not, we'll we'll close out from there. I think our first question came through uh, around transaction fees. Have they been established yet for state proof calls? Yeah, that's a great question. So for the state proof alpha, it's exposed via the mirror node REST API, which means it does not consume a network resource and therefore does not have a network service fee associated with it. Um, when full state proofs are available from the Hedera mainnet nodes directly, um, those fees would be established uh, for those calls.
Okay. Well, I guess seeing no other questions, um, thank you everybody for the time. Uh, maybe we'll hang out for another minute or so just to see if any come through, but if not, uh, we look forward to seeing you on GitHub and on the next uh, webinar call.